Uh, this is the Forsyth Monroe County Chamber of Commerce. I'm Simonia Ridley Blassingame. I'm the president and CEO of your local chamber. And as you know, during this time of COVID-19, we've been using this opportunity to do some chamber chats, some bringing to some real information to our members sort of just in time as the situation evolves. And so on today's chat, we have with us Lorraine Smith. She's the CEO of the Monroe County Hospital. I've asked her to join us because as an essential employer, she's already been on the front line of this and has experience that some of our other business owners and employers would, would find useful. So thank you, Lorraine, so much for joining us today. You're welcome. They're very welcome. Thank you. One of the first questions I'll, I'll put out there is based on a CDC recommendation. So the CDC has recommended now that everyone wear some type of cloth mask going or coming. Uh, can you share with us your thoughts about universal masking and maybe why this is a good idea or not? So I think uh, universal masking is a great idea. We implemented it early on at Monroe County Hospital um, because when we started to have to figure out just exactly how this disease works and who would come across it and whether we would have exposure, whether it be from patients or other coworkers or other um, employees or uh, vendors coming into our facility and being exposed to them. And so I think what's important to know and understand uh, right from the beginning is that, you know, this virus is respiratory droplet spread. So that's basically any type of cough or laughing or, um, loud speaking where spit could kind of be, um, you know, projected out of uh, your mouth where that's where it could be transmitted from your nose. So covering those portions of your mouth help from transmission in and also transmission out. And then what's important, and then of course outside of that is anytime you touch your face or you touch your mouth or you put something in your mouth and then you might either cross-contaminate from a surface you touched or um, from your mouth onto a surface. And so what's always important is to wash your hands, right? Wash your hands before you're touching your eyes, touching your nose, touching your mouth, um, and just making sure that um, that hand hygiene is the other probably most essential part. I think the other part that's, because with the universal masking, the part that's important there is that you're not trying to figure out who has COVID-19. There's lots of people who are COVID-19 positive that about 40% of the population that's presenting with just GI symptoms. So not your normal respiratory symptoms that you would see coughing, sneezing, uh, fever. They're strictly GI symptoms. Um, and then secondly, there's a large portion of the population that's just asymptomatic. And so they are walking around completely fine and they um, are carrying COVID-19. So not trying to discern who it is that has it and instead protecting yourself universally from everyone, maintaining that six feet of distance. But if you can't maintain that six feet of distance, then definitely wearing a mask. It's a must, must have wearing a mask. Excellent. Thank you. And so while we're talking about that, I'm going to put up on the screen and share with our members some guidelines that were presented uh, from the governor's office about best practices. And so a lot of that we've talked about already. We'll talk a little bit later about what it is to screen and evaluate workers. I do have a question for you about that. But what you've talked about before in terms of the hand washing and sanitation and enhanced sanitation is here. In a previous video, we did do uh, share uh, some best practices, if you will, in terms of how to best sanitize a space with our um, employers. And so I guess now I'll stop sharing the screen, but one of the things I wanted to ask you about is maybe what else should they be thinking about in terms of um, experiences beyond sanitation and cleanliness that you already experienced as a essential employer? I'm curious about things like access to cleaning supplies or, or things in the supply chain. How has that journey been for you at the hospital? And do you think um, it'll be different for, uh, for, for this idea of masking, let's say? Is it possible that all employers will be able to, to access a steady supply of masks for their customers, clients, and employees in a reasonable way? Um, what do you think? So it's difficult now. So I think a lot of the normal supply chains that we used to use, um, even as a healthcare system, is very limited. Um, we're having deliveries come weeks and weeks behind what they normally would. Um, as, a, as a hospital, we're able to access the national strategic national stockpile. 
Um, however, and part of part of that is because the regular supply chains, even through um, places like Amazon and things like that, they're just so behind in shipping. And then the cost of these essential things like masks and, and cleaners, the cost has become astronomical. So wow. it's going to be tough for a lot of small businesses, if they can even get their hands on them, to afford them. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind as well. How do we keep up? Now, there are some cheaper ways, um, and I don't know um, exactly the formulas to make up, obviously, some bleach solutions and things of those nature. Um, bleach is tough to even get your hands on these days in the supermarkets, right? Um, but a lot of facilities, if you just use regular paper towels and um, also tough to get your hands on these days and um, bleach solution, a proper, I don't know the exact form, a proper amount of solution bleach to water ratio um, to help wipe everything down um, and frequently, right? So again, but that should never replace proper hand hygiene or covering your face or your mouth and just being careful, especially before you eat, making sure your hands are clean. And, you know, you'll just, you've become aware, right, as you go through this, just even going through a drive through you know, you, you take your credit card and you hand it to uh, another person and they give you that credit card back and you put it in your wallet and you're safe in your car, but now you're going to take those same hands um, and open your straw up, you know, take the cover off the straw and then put that straw in your mouth, right? So, boom, just simple like that to so not being um, cognizant that in between that, interaction um, or transaction of paying, you need to go ahead and sanitize your hands if possible before touching any of your food, oh, wow. uh, preferably always washing your hands. So that reminds me, I have gone through the drive through here in the COVID-19 um, pass, and I have seen employers uh, or um, serving that have their mask on. So we've talked about universal masking here, and so clearly some employers are requiring their employees to, to take fevers before they come in, and then they're, everybody's wearing a mask. But can you talk to us a little bit? It, it makes me a little nervous about what I call medical information, uh, taking temperatures, and then how to avoid HIPAA violations. Um, we'll put a link on our website for HIPAA. I don't know exactly what it stands for, but I know it's related to medical information. You're not supposed to share it. And so sure. um, from my time in the military, just remember no HIPAA violations, no HIPAA violations. And so can you talk to yeah. us a little bit maybe about how employers can safeguard themselves in that way as they're um, collecting and maybe maintaining some sensitive information on, on their employees? Sure. So I think um, screening employees, um, while it's beneficial because you feel like you're doing something, just again, to be careful that I don't think it takes the place of the universal masking because you can screen your employees by asking them if they're symptomatic, but you can be contagious even days before you're symptomatic. So um, when you do screen the employees, then you have to make a decision as to what will you do with that information. So if an employee tells you, you they have a fever, and then you ask them to stay home, then making sure that, you know, they get follow-up before they come back. How do you direct them? And then it's very important, and we, we get this uh, confused a lot, especially in healthcare, because with healthcare, um, people's uh, health information might be on a need-to-know basis if you're their care provider. But in an employee-employer situation, it is not anybody else's right to know an employee's uh, protected health information. And even if it's for the greater good of protecting them, um, and now if the employee wants to share a diagnosis um, with their coworkers, that is fine, but it's not up to the employer to say, you know, um, employee Johnny's gotten COVID-19, so if you were in contact with them, then please protect yourself or get tested. Um, and in fact, if someone does come down as COVID-19 positive, it's reported up through the DPH channels, and then Department of Public Health will do all that work. They will be the ones to reach out and anyone who has come in contact with that COVID-19 positive um, person and reach out to them and let them know that they have to monitor, but that's not something for the employer to do. Oh, no, that's a very sure. good uh, tip. I was not aware that the Department of Health only was making those recommendations. Clearly, they put out that uh, we've seen on the news in places where an employee was, you know, 
diagnosed with the virus. And so obviously the folks in the workplace where I were notified, it just wasn't clear in terms of news who's making the mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. who's doing that reporting. So thank you for that. I guess, and what about employers? Do they always have to get medical uh, doctor approved notes, if you will, if someone's not feeling well? What do you recommend in that case? Or do, I, I mean, I would recommend they be consistent in how they handle it, but is that always the best Absolutely. course of action? Um, I, so I think that's up to each individual employer and of course the size of the organization, which matters. Um, if somebody is sick, you definitely want them to be at home. I think in general, even pre-COVID-19, um, I don't think that you want a sick employee coming to work contaminating the rest of your workforce. Um, my recommendation would be, and what we're doing at Monroe County Hospital, is we have partnered with an employee health organization to screen and uh, work with our employees and kind of give us the green light for that they can come back to work. Um, and that's just so we can do exactly what you said, which is be consistent across the board. And it's not um, based on our, um, you know, decision making of whether this employee is healthy enough to come back to work. Wow, those are great, great tips. Again, I want to thank you for coming on today, and I'll give the last word to you, but I want to say on behalf of our community, we want to thank you not just for today's chat with us, but certainly during this whole COVID-19 experience, you and your staff have been um, extraordinary in terms of making our community be safe and providing you know, top-notch medical care for us. And so uh, words okay. cannot express how grateful to you I am. So please express that to your, to your team. But over to you, any last words you'd like to share with with the audience about uh, anything we've talked about or or anything, you, you get the last word. No, I just wanna thank uh, people like you and the community who have just been in full support of us in so many ways, whether it's you know sharing your last box of masks or gloves or sewing us uh, masks or bringing food by or just the information or an outlet like this to provide information. It's the community support has just been overwhelming. And, you know, for a long time, Monroe County Hospital knows uh, what a great community we have and how supportive you are of us, but there's really seems to be no end to that support. And we just thank you all. Well, again, Lorraine Smith, the CEO of Monroe County Hospital, again, wanna thank you for your time. Thank you.